got a couple of things for you. One is what Sean has, which is very small and light, but worth bucks. <laughs> it's money. Each year we try to give about $400, which has pretty much been contributed by uh, other printmakers, people who own presses, and folks who really are enthusiastic about what Ray's done. And then we've also made, and Finn's going to present it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so this could take about a half hour. <laughs> about money, I'll help. Yeah. So this is the, the award. Oh, dear. Oh. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you so much. And thank you, too, buddy. <laughs> Jim for being my first teacher. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, well, I would like to uh, expatiate on the word enabler because nobody <laughs> does anything unless there's people helping them. And uh, George certainly inspired me. I I was uh, quite young when George came. I I think he had to find a wooden box for me to stand on to draw <laughs> at the easel. <laughs> And, uh, of course, uh, Bill Gifler. And I, <clears throat> coincidentally, as I was graduating from the art school, um, I was asked to do the largest painting I'd ever done in uh, the home of the Crocker sisters. I painted three of their rooms with latex paint. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I saw the work that they collected in Europe on their walls, German Expressionist uh, prints. And uh, unfortunately, they were uh, not as cognizant of uh, their accomplishments at that time and didn't really talk to me very much. But uh, I've always treasured that uh, connection that I had. Uh, they were in their late 90s. They were... 98 and uh, 99 or 100 or something like that. <coughs> and then, of course, as I mentioned, uh, Bill Givler uh, did introduce me to printmaking. And then on and on. All. And, of course, Eliza uh, brought so many artists to the city from various parts of the United States, and I made friends with them and her Inkling Studio is a major, major uh, part of the uh, history of the printmaking uh, craft and art in this city. And I understand it still continues under another setting, at another setting. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I would like to uh, go into the gallery and, and uh, answer questions and... Uh, it's a, a rundown of uh, about 25, 30 years, uh, <clears throat> and uh, so there's some big jumps in it, but uh, uh, answer any of your questions. So can we Yeah, first proceed? open up the prize, oh, you want because it's that? got um, this isn't retrail, going to... retrail smooth etching, which was <laughs> done with uh, wine glasses and... Uh, Coffee cups and what else did we use? Like old old steel rulers from the metal shops. So it's, there's a lot of character to it. And then, if anyone's interested, there are some photographs uh, that Charlene has put together in a scrapbook, and then a little summary of what the history of the print prize as well. Very so that's uh, one of Ray's etching presses, drawn from memory by Ray. How recent is this? <laughs> 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 house is. Yeah. 
And this is a statue of the uh, hero who carried a stone on his back and uh, set fire to the uh, granary there, which housed a couple hundred uh, Spanish leaders who uh, were destroyed in there. And Father Hidalgo uh, marched into the city from a road that uh, is right about here, marched down with about 30,000 people that he collected from uh, his trip from uh, Dolores Hidalgo, 30, 20, 30 miles away. University is here. Major churches are in the foreground, and, and you can see it's a very compressed kind of place. Most of the buildings are handmade, which gives it a, a wonderful kind of character. And this is the uh, granary. It's now an art museum where the fighting uh, started in 1810. This is our shop. Uh, we completed the building in uh, 2004, three or four. And when the um, uh, hospital, what's the name of the hospital? That, uh, I can't think of it right now. It's out near uh, Beaverton now. Oh, St. Vincent. St. Vincent. Saint Vincent, thank you. Uh, when they moved, they sold a lot of the equipment uh, for very little money. And these, this is one of two sinks. There's another one right there. And I bought it <laughs> for $10 each and stored it in our basement for 30 years. <laughs> And then crated it up, and uh, in 2003 we moved a lot of our presses and uh, those two sinks, among other things, down. <clears throat> Here's Ray's uh, uh, press. It's a smaller press than this one, although it looks bigger in the photo. It's about uh, 1,800 square feet uh, floor space, and near it there's a gallery. Uh, that we show uh, work that's done in the studio. Another shot of it. Now this is an engraving uh, done with a Buren. Um, most of you probably know what a Buren is. It's a small tool about as simple as any uh, graphic tool could be. And uh, it's important to describe it for just a minute because it's um, something that had a big effect on me. Let's see if I've got, I made a little sketch of it here. Well, maybe I don't. Maybe I don't. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's, uh, the tip of it is like an ice skate. And like an ice skate on ice, it cuts a groove and throws up a little berm on each side and at the end, and uh, the curl that appears at the end has to be removed with a little tool called a scraper, and so you snap that off. And the importance of this description is that when you make a cut, uh, you have to think uh, just what you're doing and how that's going to integrate into the overall image. If you make a mistake, uh, it's, it's a devil of a job to scrape it out. Then you have to burnish it down. So, just before I, I went to uh, the University of Iowa, there was an exhibit of Dewar engravings at the Art Museum. And uh, I'm afraid, I'm ashamed to say that I passed very rapidly <laughs> through the show, because uh, to me they all looked alike. <laughs> And uh, they just blurred together, and and so <clears throat> I really wasn't prepared to embrace engraving. But when I did a, a smaller print, a simpler print, I, I found that it it made me think uh, about the uh, total uh, image that I was trying to create. Could I do a drawing uh, before I started? and how each uh, little element uh, contributed to that final result. And I found that uh, 
I was surprised to find that uh, that kind of complicated experience that one goes through when one does an engraving uh, stimulated me and made me, uh, uh, well, just be willing to stick it out because it took uh, months to, to do something like that. Um, the school term ended, uh, the year ended, and I got a job working for the Forest Service at, <coughs> in, in June, and uh, within a few hours of taking my uh, responsible job, I was alone in a little cabin uh, that had been a ranger station in an obscure part of the forest. And I burned the building down. <laughs> I, I got up and made my breakfast on a stove. My wife and uh, kids were back in Portland. They had joined me. And uh, we just spent our last dollar on food and whatnot. And um, as the fire was coming down through the roof and landing on the floor, I stood there and thought, now what is it that I just could not bear to lose in this fire if it did continue. I Somehow I thought God was going to intervene and stop the fire. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and so I saw this plate and I think a box of books and a couple other things and got them out and then I, uh, <laughs> let the fire burn. <laughs> there was this orange rectangle over there on the ground. Yes. Um, How much longer does it have that job? <laughs> <laughs> they thought I was invaluable, so they <laughs> So at this time, you know, I was uh, much in debt to Renaissance uh, composition. I uh, tried to develop uh, the uh, forms that were taken from cadavers. Uh, I guess I should back up a minute and say that uh, Dr. Bacon was the head of the anatomy department at what then was the University of Oregon Medical School and uh, was taking night classes at the art school and I was a janitor there and talked to him one night and he invited me up. I think George Manuel and, uh, and Jack McLaurin uh, went up and the moon was full at night, I remember. And it was just uh, after Thanksgiving, so we saw, saw this uh, mass of material that uh, made me never want to eat another turkey. <laughs> and um, then when I went to Iowa, the anatomist uh, chief there uh, had invited uh, artists for decades. He was an elderly man and was not surprised that I wanted to uh, continue to draw the uh, anatomy of the bodies. And uh, so that's where this came from. And, uh, 